Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's fifth grade, module 14, lesson one. I'm going to start off by going over the I can objective. It says, I can use concrete models or drawings to represent decimal addition. And the learning objective is to represent decimal addition using concrete models or drawings. The prior learning is that students fluently added multi-digit whole numbers. Students fluently subtracted multi-digit whole numbers. All right, so moving into the lesson, we're on page 339. We have a spark you're learning. This is a baker put some flour onto a food scale as shown. What will the scale read if the baker adds another 0 0.29 pounds of flour to the bowl? Use a visual model to help you find the weight after the baker adds 0 0.29 pounds of flour to the bowl. Draw to show your work. Now, we are going to be doing a lot of drawing and a lot of modeling in this lesson. And yes, it does take a long time, but the reason for this lesson is to draw models and to understand. If you're just doing the numbers, the only rule you have to remember is line up your decimals before you add. So if you have two numbers that you're adding, just make sure your decimals are in a line with each other and then you just add like normal. All right, before adding, we have two numbers that's gonna equal another number and we're doing it in visual models. So I am gonna be creating three different squares here. And I am gonna draw over this, just to make them nice and big so that we can see. All right, so the first number, the pound that we're starting out with is 0.4. I know that that's in the 10th place value, so I am gonna make my first square into 10th. So I'm just gonna break it up into 10 parts. So if I split it in half, I know that I can guide myself with fives. Two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. And I am going to be coloring in the first four. So here's one, two, three, and four. All right, then it's saying I'm adding 0.29 or 29 hundredths. Here's where modeling gets a little bit difficult. I am going to have to break up these next two boxes into a hundred pieces. So it's 10 just like I did, but it's 10 going the other way too. So it is going to take some time to set up, but it's so important to see visually what's happening. So give me a second while I draw out my hundreds here. All right, there's 10 that we're going to go the other way. Woo, there's 100 squares. All right, now I am going to be coloring in 29 of them. So I know that this whole block is going to be 10. This will, whole block will be 20, and then I'm just going to choose 9. So I'm going to stop at that very last square showing my 29. Okay, now what we need to do is break up that last box again into 100 pieces and show the difference with the blue and the green and how they look together for our total number. And then I'll show you what it looks like when we're just adding numbers. All right, let's break this box into hundreds again. All right, there's my 10 one way. All right, and there's my hundreds. Now, if I'm adding them together, I have my four lines of blue, so I need to make sure I take care of that first. So here's my one, two, three, and four. Then with my green, I had two holes and then just a nine. So there's my one, my two, and then just nine. I know that's a little bit hard to see, sorry, because it is blending over some of the other artwork here. But then I need to count what I have. So I have one ten, two ten, three tens, four tens in my blue. Then it's five, six, 
and then nine tenths. So what would six tenths be and nine ones be? That would be 0. 0.69 or 69 hundredths because I did color in 69 of the hundred squares that I have. If you were adding this just with your numbers, here's how it would look. You would have 0. 0.4 and then you need to make sure that your decimals line up. So your decimal needs to go right underneath it. Your two goes under your four because they're both in the tenths place value. And then your nine is going to stick out in your hundredths place value. Now, if you want to leave it like that, that's fine. If you want to make sure that you have each number over each other, you can go ahead and add a zero here because there's technically nothing in the hundredths place value, but it still says the number that we want it to. Okay, then we would add zero plus nine is zero, four plus two is six, and just drop your decimal for 0 0.69 hundredths. All right, let's go ahead and flip the page here. Thankfully, no more drawing, but we do have um, representation of our blocks that will help us through this. So we're on page 340 and we have a build your understanding number one that says, what will the scale read if the baker adds another 0.8 pound of flour to the bowl that's already there and it says 0.3? It says, use base 10 blocks to help you find the weight after the baker adds the flour. Let one flat, and remember flat is this guy here, it's that big square, represent one whole and then one long, that vocab long is just the skinny bar here. So flat and then long. Okay, so for A, do you think the weight on the scale will be less or more than one pound? So if I added 0.8 to my 0.3, do you think it's gonna go over a pound or do you think it'll stay under a pound? And how do you know? For B, what base 10 blocks do you use to show 0.3 and 0.8? So if you had to represent 0.3 using either a flat or a long, what would you use and how many for each number? C, what did you get when you add the tenths? So when you add your tenths together, what would you be getting? How many total pieces? Trying to not give the answer away. And then for D, do you need to regroup? So it, did it go over one, did it not? Do you need to regroup? Think about that. And E, what is the weight after the baker adds the flour to the bowl? So this is where we're actually answering the question, what's our total weight um, after we add those two together? All right, go ahead and try your best on these problems. We'll come back and solve them together when you're done. So go ahead and hit pause here. All right, great job. Let's go ahead and go over this. So for A, do you think the weight on the scale will be more or less? Well, I know that if I'm adding eight to a three, that's 11. And I know that 11, even if I was just adding eight and three, needs to be regrouped. It's probably gonna be more than one. It's gonna bump me into the next place value. So I am gonna put greater than. And how do I know? And I'm just gonna say prior knowledge. That's my excuse because I know eight plus three is 11 and that needs to regroup. It's gonna go past into the next place value, which is one. For B, what base 10 blocks are you gonna be showing? For 0.3, remember that's in the 10th, so I'm gonna need three longs. That's the name of those bars. And then for 0.8, I need eight of the longs. Then it kind of gives it to you. So what do you get when you add the tenths together? When I add them all together, I'm gonna have 11 longs or 11 tenths. And I'm just gonna put in parentheses, those are the longs that we're talking about. Do we need to regroup? Yes, we can't have two digits in a place value, right? So when we have 11, we are gonna be bumping up into the next number. So yes, we do need to regroup. Because 10 of those tenths are going to be equal to one whole. We know that because that's 10 over 10 and that equals one. All right, so for E, what is the weight after the baker adds the flour? Well, if I do it just the standard way and I put 0 0.8 
and 0.3 and I add them together, I know I'm gonna have one here and then when I carry over, I'm gonna have one here, but remember that place value drops right in between them. So it is gonna be 1.1 pounds. All right, go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems for this lesson and I'll see you back for module 14, lesson two.